If you've been around the investing scene for a while, you've probably heard someone say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Or maybe you've heard someone suggest just the opposite while using the same analogy. Put all your eggs in one basket and watch it. Intelligent investors shun risk. The first camp is saying that in the stock market, it's a good idea to buy many companies because it will reduce your portfolio risk. If a catastrophe happens to one of your companies, you still have the other ones. Meanwhile, the second camp says that if you own too many companies, you usually don't understand any of them too well. And that's a risky thing too. Today, I'm here to tell you that these two groups often miss an essential point and that they are, in a sense, both wrong. And since I've presented both the first and the second analogy on this channel before, well, I guess that I've been doubly wrong. In fact, it's better if you don't speak at all, Perkin. This is the Swedish investor, bringing you the best tips and tools for reaching financial freedom through stock market investing. Let's assume that you live in the US and are around 30 years old. If this doesn't apply to you, don't worry. This video's point will most likely apply to you nonetheless. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, you are currently earning something like 50k per year. Furthermore, let's assume that you'll work until you're 70. Before the fire community of this channel starts screaming at me, remember that this is just a thought experiment. Relax. Now, we will also assume that your wage will increase like wages have been increasing during the last 40 years, which means something like 3.5% per 12 months, in nominal terms. Moreover, your salary will increase a little bit beyond that, just because you're acquiring more experience as you grow older. This means that you'll earn $5.2 million over your lifetime. <whistles> Not bad. Now we're getting closer to the point. Your income is an asset, and a pretty damn big one at that. Maybe no surprise there, but stay with me. What kind of implications do you think that this have on the conventional advice given about diversification? We're not quite done with the assumptions just yet. Let's say that you live in Texas so that your take-home pay is about 42k per year. And so, after taxes, you earn something like $4.3 million over a lifetime. Also, as investors, we know that a bird in hand is worth more than a bird in the bush. Money today is more valuable than it is tomorrow. So, let's apply a so-called discount rate of 10% to all your future salary cash flows. If you sum this up, you'll get something which could be referred to as the net present value of your future salary. $710,000. Now, let me ask you this. How much do you currently have in savings? According to Fed's survey of consumer finances from 2019, the median net worth of a household in the 35 years old and younger category is approximately $14,000. No matter how you measure this, my guess is that your current savings and stock market investments are a very small portion of that number that we mentioned before, the net present value of your salary. This has interesting implications on diversification, which I think that most investors do not understand. The do not put all your eggs in one basket group says, The one universal rule that idiots in finance know is diversification. It's the only free lunch. You've got to diversify. Single stocks are a bad place to invest money. You're much better off to be spread out and well diversified. Knowing how to diversify well is more important than almost anything. People don't understand this. The put all your eggs in one basket and watch it group says, you know, diversification, that's for idiots, right? Diversification is for the know-nothing investor. It's yeah, not for the professional. We think diversification, as practiced generally, makes very little sense for anyone that knows what they're doing. But ultimately, for most younger investors, no matter which one of these groups that they listen to, they remain undiversified. As your current portfolio is such a small percentage of the total amount of money that you'll make over a lifetime, it doesn't really matter too much for your risk profile if you diversify or not. Which one of these two looks riskier to you? The first represents an investor who bought the S&P 500 index, and the second represents one who bought, well, just Apple. Not much of a difference, right? You're still terribly dependent on your salary in both scenarios. This has two important implications for young investors. Firstly, 
investing when your means are small should be focused on learning rather than risk exposure. If you'd be so unlucky that you lose all your capital when you are, say, 25, it probably doesn't matter too much as you can replace that amount with your salary in no time. The conventional wisdom to invest in an S&P 500 index is actually terrible advice from this standpoint because that's a strategy which yields basically zero experience with individual companies and industries. If you focus on learning instead, you'll have some experience under your belt when big money eventually comes, when your investing decisions carry a lot of weight. When I started out on my investment journey back in 2013, I picked just three companies. The results from these investments were quite mediocre to say the least, but I like to think that the knowledge and experience that I got from this has helped me in making uh, less mediocre decisions after that. This is not the carrot but the stick approach to become a great investor. I think most people's learning experience is accelerated if it stings a little bit when you are wrong. Secondly, to actually reduce your financial risk, which is what diversification is meant for, you must turn your focus away from your portfolio and look to your earnings. Educating yourself to secure that income further becomes an efficient way of reducing your risk. Maybe creating additional income streams through something like a second job or an entrepreneurial side hustle. Keeping your mind and body healthy by working out and eating well is a really good idea too, which has nothing to do with the structuring of your portfolio. We can conclude from this that diversification should be extremely age-dependent. Someone who is fresh out of college and thinking about investing his or her first $2,000 doesn't have to diversify at all. Just one added caveat. Do not invest money that you cannot afford to lose, such as the down payment on a home. Meanwhile, someone who is approaching their 60s and 70s should probably spread their bets a bit more. But there are a few more things to consider and you can learn about them in this video where I've summarized the most important things that Warren Buffett has to say about diversification. Check it out! Cheers guys!